This is where we're at in the Bitcoin four-year cycle. And I got to tell you, I think we are way ahead of schedule of where we should be as compared to the last cycle. And now on this channel, I've talked uh, quite a bit extensively about the Bitcoin four-year cycles, but I will remind everybody that all models are wrong and just some are useful. So will this model hold up? Well, it's been going strong for 12 years now. So what we're talking about is if uh, you haven't followed this before, four-year cycles, very simply put, you've got everything that happens with the first halving. And when the Bitcoin halving comes about, then of course the rewards that the miners get are slashed in half. This will lead to a little more scarcity. So of course the first one happened in January, 2012, or excuse me, just 2012, we'll go with that one. Having. Then after that, immediately a year later, we have an all-time high. Then we see a monstrous dip in the, the option because things get overheated, and then we have like a reset year. Same thing happened again in 2016. We had a Bitcoin halving, and Bitcoin halvings happen every four years regardless of who gets nominated and actually accepts the presidency, if we have a recession or not, if we have a war, if we have another pandemic. It happens every four years. So 2016, halving. All-time high in 2017. Then we had a monstrous dip in 2018, and then we had a reset year in 2019. And we just did it again. In 2020, there was a halving, roughly on May 11, 2020. Then we had an all-time high, double top, 2021. Then we had a brutal 2022. I think you can remember that. And now we're sitting pretty in 2023 with this reset year. And everybody's asking the question, well, where are we going? And to see where we're going, we got to see where we've been. And that's why we take a just a, a quick look back, because to me, I feel like we are in this reset year. We are in 2023, the same place we were in 2019 as we go into a halving year, which will happen in 2024. So if we take a look back, we have to remember that on May 1st, 2019, this of course uh, was when we had our, our halving back then. It was actually May 11th. We can see that our all-time high was around 19,800. We'll just round up $20,000, okay? And roughly on the halving day, we reached about $6,000. $6,000, about a third. If you go all the way back to April, maybe it's about a half, somewhere around 30%. Quite a lower than the all-time high. And of course, we remember what happened and then, of course, we had the 2021s. Everything was happy, right? And here we are back again. Same thing. So if we take a look at 2019, well, how do we fare, you know, right now in 2023? Well, today, Bitcoin's price is actually holding up quite well. We're at uh, 28,657, 28,648. So we're roughly about a little less than half. Because if we were at 67,000, 28,000, eh, maybe 40%, 40% over. So we are ahead of where we're at before. So let's take a look back. The first quarter for our reset year. And we'll close, we'll go all the way till, till right now. And if we take a look at it, we can just see that January 1st, 2019, again, this is our reset year, the first quarter plus a couple of months. We can see that it uh, was pretty flat, a little downward action, and then just went up. And if we take a look at the same thing for 2023, our reset year, the current reset year, almost looks like the same thing, January 1st, 2023 to April 30th, or till today. And we can see that everything's in the green, and we've hit a nice little, little upper crescendo as we move into the rest of the year. So the question then becomes, okay, so we have a Bitcoin having coming up, and we're looking at roughly about a year, April 7th, this is the ETA, April 7th, 2024, about 11 months or so. So again, if we're taking a look at that, and we're taking a look at, I think we are in our reset year, which is 2023. How does that look? Well, if we take a look back January 1st, 2020 to May 11th, again, we'll do the first quarter roughly plus a couple months of the halving year. You can see that for the halving, it was kind of anticlimactic. I mean, there was a lot of, a little bit of uh, price action, 7,000 up to 10,000 people were happy. They were like, oh, the Bitcoin halving is happening and it's going to happen. And the narrative becomes buy the rumor, sell the news. And then before we get there, big drop off. Now, to be fair, during that part of uh, March 2020, I think we all remember there was this uh, little thing called COVID that happened. So we could chalk that up to a little bit of a global pandemic issue. 
So we can take a look here and say, okay, well then uh, around uh, May 11th or so, we actually recovered quite a bit. So you went from 5,000 to almost 10,000. You almost doubled your money from March to May. March, April, May, two months, double your money. Good luck doing that in the S&P 500. And that was it. And people were like, well, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. That's pretty good. And then people maybe just sold off and goes, well, these, you know, that's, that's it for that. And, and maybe we'll hit to our all time highs or, or maybe not, but everybody forgets about this, this aspect of it, which is this, when we have the having and we go along just flatline and we kind of zoom out and see what happened again, we'll take the full year of the Bitcoin having, we had the having somewhere right around here, $8,600, May 11th, 2020. People are like, that's a pretty good time. 5,000, all the way up to almost 10,000 around here, then it dropped down. But the big thing is people forget of how high Bitcoin actually ran. It went from 8,600 11th of May. And if we go all the way to the end of the year, how do we do? Well, we hit all time highs in December of 15, 16 December of 2020. People thought that was it, but it wasn't because it kept going higher, and then we had a nice little 28,000. So as people go from here to here, I think we're ahead of the game right now. I think things are looking pretty good moving forward, not to say that things can't just fall apart, but if we just take a look out and go into the end of the year, for the last time, it was pretty great. And then there's some, also some other things that are going on which make me a little more bullish. One of those is Bitcoin set a new record of daily transactions. This just happened a couple of days ago, and this was during the whole time that JP Morgan bought another bank that unfortunately went under. If we take a look here, this is from Blockworks, and it states the daily number of Bitcoin transactions surged beyond 568,000, nearly 78,000 more than its previous peak during the top of the 2017 bull run. Over 307,000 of those transactions were ordinals, ordinals being on the Bitcoin blockchain, if you can mint that for NFTs, on the blockchain, some of the purists despise it. Some of the people who are looking for more utility for Bitcoin love it. I'm not here to debate that. All I can tell you is this. If we take a look at blockchain.com, you're going to see that in the bluish line right here, we can see just how much uh, we have as far as transaction. It's pretty stable going all the way back to, to May, May 3rd, 15th of May. And if we, let's just scroll out to three years or so, we can see that over that time, we had quite a bit of transactions, but nothing like how it is all the way over here in the upper right-hand side, 682,000. That's on the 30th of April. So things are moving along and it's very bullish. However, having said all that before people say, Rob's just full of hope and he's just here to, to sell a narrative of Bitcoin. Well, I'll give you the flip side of that. And the flip side is this, those are all great things. And we've talked numerous times about the things that are happening, but the things that can derail it. There was a video we put out uh, just over a week ago or so, sell Bitcoin in May and go away. An old adage for uh, the traditional finance world. We took a look if that would hold up and we took a look at uh, midterm elections, presidential elections. We took a look at uh, the macro side of it. We may take a look at the pending or upcoming recession that could actually happen and could that derail it and the time frame it would take to actually keep in line with the Bitcoin cycles. I will highly recommend you check that video out. I'll link that in the description, but there is some things going on. This is from Nick Durley. He brought up a good point. He says, look, uh, the M2 money supply, M2 money supply is officially contracting. This has only happened four previous times in the last 150 years. Imagine the money supply in America going down only happened four previous times. Each time a depression with double digit unemployment rates followed. And he brings us back all the way to the Great Depression, 1921 depression, the Panic of 1893, and the 1870s depression. These are the only times that we've actually contracted the money supply. And I was like, is that true? Let's take a look at Ben's website, the M2 money supply. I can just see that, uh, and just goes down back to the 1960s. Yeah, the money supply keeps going up. And just like Milton Freeman, who we've talked about on the show numerous times, uh, Nobel Prize winner for economics, he stated many a times, the reason for inflation is because of the amount of money that you print. If you stop printing so much money, you won't have so much inflation. And there's been plenty of debates about that. 
I still see it as the same way that Milton Friedman takes a look at it. And we can just see that we've never really contracted. And when I take a look at this, now we've done it right here since 1960, of course, 1930s, 1923. But then what they were talking about, which that graph looks a little bit different uh, than this, what they're taking a look at is the year over year. And we can just see that when we do that, the only time in the last 60, 70 years or so is happening right now. So I will just say that there was a massive amount of printing and here we are. Could it lead to a massive, huge depression? I don't know. I don't know, I'm not here to speculate. I'm just here to be in the time for the market. Time in the market for me is more important than timing the market, but at some point, might have to sell. And uh, if you're looking for uh, some insight of that, there's also a link in the description, which I talk about how and when I'm selling 80% of my crypto, again, link in the description. And that takes care of the news and what's going on today. Also, I will just uh, say this. I have been uh, talking to a, a group that I've uh, talked with before. It's a couple of good guys and a lot of things that they're doing. There's gonna be a free NFT mint. I can't tell you, they told me I can't tell you anything uh, until Wednesday or Thursday. The free mint is coming on Friday. I'll let everybody know when that's happening. That's what's going on for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it and I'll see everybody on the next one.